it's round nine welcome to today's video folks today we're going through round nine if you would have guessed it of the women's world chess championship today we have lay J with the white pieces and juan june with the black pieces yesterday we saw or not yesterday sunday we saw juan june tie it up it is now four to four she won a very critical game and now we only have a couple rounds left y'all we have today's game and then three more rounds to go so let's see what happens i wonder what we're going to get from both of our players today we have lazy j with the white pieces and we've been seeing her play e4 and then we've been seeing a couple different responses from Zhu. we've seen e4 e5 we've seen the caro in a couple games ago which i thought was really cool to see and so we'll see what we get today let's jump right into it today we have starting off we get e4 c5 from ju and june and this is definitely a surprise for me as a viewer um she's playing the sicilian y'all it's gonna get spicy no e4 e5 no roy lopez no italians no carl cons from what she played a couple days ago we get a sicilian so we get knight f3 and now e6 and there's many many different variations that can arise from this position including uh the con the taimanov um, and a whole bunch of different types of um, openings, but this is basically probably going to be an open Sicilian. So we get d4, c takes d4, knight takes, and now knight f6. And then, which is basically attacking your e4 pawn, we get knight c3, defending, knight c6, attacking the uh, d4 knight, asking it a question, what does it want to do? And Lay decides to take. She plays knight takes c6, b takes c6, and now e5 against the knight knight comes to d5 what a nice square for the knight and now knight e4 black basically at this point needs to think pretty fast and or not think pretty fast but you need to play fast as in like your moves need to be very important you need to be developing very quickly because white is going to play c4 and try and push the knight back and try and get a really nice space advantage and development advantage so we get bishop b7 and now bishop e2 and now c5 and the idea behind c5 is ju is trying to make her light squared bishop just better she needs an open diagonal for that bishop so now we get a3 the idea behind a3 is white wants to go c4 but doesn't want black to go b4 so after she plays c4 she doesn't want the knight to come to b4 so that's the whole idea behind playing a3 and now we get rook c8 this was a a fine choice by Zhu. Um, she could have played a whole bunch of different stuff. She could have played like what happens after f5. f5 is a very fighting move. E takes and knight takes. And black pretty much gets everything that they want with this. And so white doesn't really have to play into it like this. After um, playing f5, she doesn't have to play e takes f6. She could also play bishop g5, attacking the queen. And then after queen c7, rook to d6 check bishop takes pawn takes and now queen c6 um this is also another idea that probably this is what lay would have gone for because it's a little bit better for white versus um the other way where black gets everything she wants and now this would have been the position from here she's not really allowed to take here because if she takes here now you get c4 and you're just gonna lose material um because the knight can't move because the queen is right behind it and it'll just you'll lose your queen if you move that knight so you can't play um queen takes d6 you have to play queen to c6 so this would have been another idea um, but we don't see that another idea as well as instead of f5 is what happens just after queen c7 putting pressure on e5 um, and white is just going to play knight d6 check with the same idea. Bishop takes, e takes, and then um, queen takes here also still doesn't work because of c4. So you have to play queen to c6. And then the position would have gone from here. Also another idea instead of f5 is what happens after knight e3. And this is a cool um, tactical idea because of the open bishop now on the knight. And so you'd probably play bishop takes e3 and then bishop takes e4, f3. Um, is an idea you can also play bishop f3 which i think is a little bit better because you're trading off this bishop which is the light squared bishop and is a nice piece for black so she would probably play that but if she plays f3 then bishop d5 c4 bishop takes c4 bishop takes and then queen h4 check is a nice idea here because you're going to win back the um, bishop and you'll be up a pawn so she wouldn't be able to go into this either so this would have been um, a nice little tricky idea for black, but white doesn't have to play um, f3. She can just play bishop f3 instead. 
But we don't see any of this. We instead see rook c8. And now after rook c8, we get c4 attacking the knight. And now knight to e3 with the same idea of trying to trade everything off. You actually can't go knight e7 here because, uh-oh, that is mate. So... You can easily go wrong. Obviously, these players aren't going to do that. They are top level. Um, but for us mere mortals down here, just an idea. You cannot go back with the knight that way. You have to go this way to e3. That is the best move. So knight e3, bishop takes e3, bishop takes e4, and it's very similar to what we saw earlier. And now white is targeting d7, and black will pile up on the b file and attack the b2 pawn. So we get castles. And if she would have played here, bishop f3, this is a nice move because bishop f3, bishop takes, queen takes, and now bishop e7. And white is really happy. She's traded off one of black's only really good pieces and has really nice control of the light squares. And this would have been a nice idea. But instead we see castles, bishop e7, and now bishop f3, and bishop takes, queen takes, and then castles. And this is the position we get from here. So we get rook a to d1 trying to just get some power on the d file because the d7 pawn is a target for white and there's ideas of being able to triple up on the d file with putting rook to d3 rook f to d1 and then moving it up to d2 and then bringing your queen all the way back to d1 and just putting a whole bunch of power but i don't think white really just has time to do this but that would be really nice if they could get everything they want that's what they would try and go for but we see f6 which is a nice move trying to put pressure on the e5 pawn and we get queen to g3 if she would have taken with e takes f6 bishop takes queen to e2 queen to e7 now after b4 this is a nice fighting line because of c takes a takes queen takes and now after rook takes d7 we would get queen to take c4, offering a queen trade, and then we would probably just go down to a simplification with all of this going on, and we trade the c pawns and the a pawn, and you just trade it all down, and this is probably just going to be a draw. But instead of all that, we see queen to g3 instead of e takes f6, and now we get f takes e5, queen takes e5, bishop to f6 attacking the queen, queen to d6 saying, hey, I'm going to try and win that d7 pawn, looks pretty good. Bishop takes b2 though. And now here, if she would have played instead just the immediate rook f7, now you actually can't take on c5 because you're like, oh, my queen and my bishop are looking here with only the rook as a defender. What happens if I play bishop takes c5? But now you get bishop e7 and you just lose material immediately because you're going to have to take here. And then after we trade, I'm going to win this bishop. So that was not possible to play um, bishop takes c5 here. But instead of seeing that, we see bishop takes b2 instead of rook f7 and now we get bishop takes c5 because you're allowed to play it now and then rook f7 and this is a nice move if she would have played rook f5 this is also a nice move because of bishop takes a7 rook takes c4 trading off uh the c and the a pawns now queen takes e6 is a really pretty move because you're like oh my god i'm giving up my queen no because you take and then i'm gonna take back so then you get this and we would probably just trade and the pawn, the A pawn probably is going to fall pretty soon, uh, but this is probably still going to be a draw. So that would have been another idea of playing rook f5, but we don't see rook f5, we see rook f7. And now after rook f7, we get rook b1 attacking the bishop. She also could have played the immediate bishop takes a7 and then rook takes c4 and then gone from here of playing the same type of idea. And then trying to trade everything off. And if you don't want to trade anything, everything off, you want to try and defend your A pawn, that's fine. And I'm going to go rook A8. And this is probably just gonna, still going to be a draw. Also, instead of taking the A7 pawn, if you play bishop E3, just trying to go back and defend things. Now I'm going to take your C pawn. And if you take this way and we do the same type of sequence, I'm going to go back. I'm going to play rook to D3, trying to save my A pawn. And then if A5, moving out of the way of the bishop, we would get rook B1 attacking the bishop. Rook to c2 defending, and then probably rook b3, and this is still probably going to be a draw. There's a lot of drawable ways that this can go. So we instead see rook b1 instead of bishop takes a7, or instead of bishop b3. And now we get a beautiful move, a brilliancy, by Zhu. We get bishop e5. Try and understand it for a second. You're like, uh, you're giving up your bishop? What are you doing? But... This is how it goes in the game. Queen takes e5. Now, rook f5. And you have no way of getting out of this. You have to play queen d6. 
and you're going to have to trade like this. So she's very happy to see this. Zhu is very happy to simplify the position and take a draw with black. And Lei is probably not too happy to have to go into this because she was going to try and push for some type of edge. But there's really just not much to fight for. Now, pretty much everything is just like, hey, I don't want to push too hard because if I push too hard, I could get myself in like kind of a compromising pos position where now I'm fighting for a draw and I don't want to be fighting for a draw. <laughs> like I want to be winning or I just want an easy draw and I want to be able to rest for tomorrow and get ready for the next game. So this is what we see in the game. If instead of playing bishop e5, if you play rook c6, which looks so natural, you're like, hey, I don't want you to be on this square anymore. I want you to get out of the way. There is actually a beautiful move in rook takes b2. I know. Giving up the queen, rook takes d6, bishop takes d6, and now I'm going to come to that eighth rank. And if rook f8 to try and defend, because if I get to go here, obviously I'm going to win your queen, so you have to go back. And now rook f8, and I will take, and you will take, and now rook b7, and it is two rooks for the queen, and this is really nice for white, and it has a nice advantage for white, so this would have just been really nice for Lei to get into. Zhu does not play rook c6, though. That would have been a super grave error. Instead, she plays the brilliant move of bishop e5, of course, and so we get into this position where we trade rooks, and now we get rook b7, rook 5 to c7, now rook f to b1, and rook takes c4, winning that pawn. And now we get g3. If you try and win this pawn, unfortunately, it's going to be pretty bad. Because you're going to get rook c1 check, rook takes, rook takes, and you have to go back because your king is going to get back rank mated, takes, takes, and that is horrible. You're still getting back rank mated. So when you get to here, you actually can't take this rook. You have to play queen d1. And this is just so sad. You lose your queen. And now rook takes. And this would have been the position from here. So that would have been a huge grave error for Lei to get into. Fortunately, she sees this. And she doesn't go for rook takes d7 to win the pawn back. She instead plays g3. Getting rid of all the back rank threats in the future. And she just gives her king some breathing room. So we get g3. Rook 4 to c7 going back. And it's about 27 minutes for Ju and about 21 minutes for Lei. And they're on move 26 and they have to hit move 40 for um, extra time. So not really that big of a time trouble for either of them at this point. Now we get king g2. If she would have played instead here, rook c1 check. After rook takes, rook takes, king g2. A way that you can go wrong is if you play queen a8 thinking I'm pinning your rook to the king what are you gonna do actually i now have queen takes d7 and now what are you gonna do you have to if you go here thinking oh i'm just gonna attack the rook another way and i'm gonna win the rook oh you just got made it so can't do that you have to go back to uh queen to f8 and then trying to defend against uh this pawn and then you'd probably just get queen takes e6. And this is just really beautiful for white. So this would have been a huge mistake for uh, Zhu if she would have played queen e8, thinking she would have the pin. But obviously she doesn't do that. And we get rook 4 to c7 instead. And now we get king g2, a5, a4, just locking up everything on the a file, solidifying that. Then we get h6, some breathing room for her king, h4. Just pushing her pawns to where they need to be on the optimal squares. King h8. Rook 1 to b2. King h7, bringing her king up. Now h5, not letting the king come to g6. King h8. Rook 2 to b5. Rook takes b7. Rook takes b7. Queen to f6, trying to align her pieces on the f file. Rook takes d7. And now rook to f8, and this is a dead draw, f4, and now that the queen and the rook are kind of shut down on the f-file, the rook's like, all right, fine, I'll go back. Rook c8, queen d4, offering a queen trade, which Ju accepts, and now after the queen trade, we get king g8, rook e4, attacking the e-pawn, rook c2 check, king to f3, rook to a2, king to g4, getting out of the way of the checks. And now rook to a3 staying on the a file so that if you ever take with e6, which is what Lei does, I'm going to take on a4. And now king f5, king h7, rook to a6, rook to a1, 
rook to a7 this they're these are just waiting moves let's be real <laughs> like there's not a lot to be fighting for in this position other than maybe the a pawn so lay does have to be a little bit careful in making sure that she is just always taking care of that a pawn so we get a4 rook a8 staying on the a file a3 g4 rook a2 g5 trading off h takes g5 f takes g5 and now g6 check h takes g6 which is forced you know you can't let the pawn take on h5 you're just not allowed so you have to take h takes g6 king g7 rook a7 check king g8 and now g7 and if lay would have played here instead king f6 instead of playing um g7 it would have been a similar um outcome because after rook f2 king e5 a2 and you're like oh no that pawn's gonna promote but fortunately the rook can't leave the second rank without hanging the pawn, so it can't go to the first rank to try and help with promotion. So it's just never going to be able to make progress. And we get rook a6, king h8, rook a7, king g8, and players would probably just repeat back and forth. So that wouldn't have been another idea. But instead we see g7, and now after g7 we see rook b2, and now king g6. You're like, why aren't you taking? You know, why aren't you taking here? And you are actually allowed to take... But after rook b7 now, king g6, now I'm going to win this pawn. So it's still going to be a draw. So I win one pawn, you win the other pawn. And, you know, that's why um, she didn't take. So obviously this would have been another option, but she doesn't go for this. She instead decides to just play king g6. Now rook b6 check, king h5, a2, rook takes a2, just giving up the pawn because it doesn't matter. It's still going to be a draw. King takes g7, rook a7 check, king g8 rook to a8 check and then the players repeated moves until move 59 and the game was a draw so we get a very simple draw from both players a little bit of a it was a little bit of a fighting game towards the beginning and then it just kind of fizzled out into a draw and this makes sense for Ju. she's very happy to see this um lay i don't know if she was caught off surprise by Ju playing the sicilian but she played a very solid game, and then that bishop f5 move was just a brilliant move from Zhu, and she just basically was able to simplify the game, um, or bishop e5 move, and she was able to simplify the game, and it was a nice game for both of them. They actually played, this game was, mind you, 59 moves. They played at 99% accuracy, both of them. Like, we're getting top-level chess, y'all. This is like... These people are good. Good. That's crazy to me. 99% for almost 60 moves is wild. I, these players are amazing. And we get a nice draw from them. So even though they, you know, it was like a kind of like a quiet draw. It's still a crazy game. Like 99% is insane. That is fucking insane. I, I'm just shook by that. That's wild. And bravo to them because that's crazy i only in my wildest dreams could i ever do that so that is the end of round nine we get another draw from the players tomorrow we get ju and june with the white pieces she's gonna have two more days with white and lay only really has one more day with white so she only has one more chance to strike back i'm sure ju is very happy to have the last day as white because she gets to decide if she wants to just you know go for the draw or if she wants to push for a win because if she wins that last game that's it. But if she draws it, we go to tie breaks. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. This was a really cool game. I enjoyed seeing a new opening. Um, the players played really nice chess. Very simple. Um, they ended up simplifying the position and we got a draw. What can you do? They both played at 99%. What more do you want? <laughs> so I will see you guys tomorrow for round 10. We only have three more rounds left, which is insane. I will see you guys tomorrow for round 10. I hope you enjoyed today's recap and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.